yo, yo, people, what is going on? This is like a Spartan Killer, and welcome to Home Improvement. Um, some of you may have noticed a little bit of something, and it might be a little odd to you. I did shave. Yes, yes, I did. But that's beside the point. What we're going to do right now is Kat took it upon herself to remodel the bathroom. So this is what it looks like. It has the paint. Remember, I showed you guys this the other day. She just got done staining these. So I think, does she still need to do no, the back side? So she needs one more coat on these and then these are gonna be done. So we pretty much have the whole bottom part of this done. I took the mirror off and the mirror is right here. So it was this big old honking mirror. So basically what they did when they put it on is they just used, basically it's almost like a black patch or like pitch, I guess, kind of like a, an adhesive, but it's not really an adhesive. Uh, so basically what I did is when I took it off, it ripped some of this, uh, it ripped some of this, um, like basically the top part of the drywall off, I guess you could say, like drywall is in different layers. So you have like the, the paint layer, you have the other layer and all this other stuff. So I ripped that off. So what we did is I got some patch and I actually just need to patch this over and that'll be good. And then what I need to do is I need to take a screwdriver and I'm going to screw drive all this off and then I'm going to sand it down. Now it may look weird because this wall's textured. But we need to get this off because we literally cannot paint. Like let's say the mirror's like this big. We would have all of these spots on there. And then what they had, they had a metal track resting on the top part of this and then they screwed it in. So I'm just gonna need to fill in those holes. And then what Kat wants to do is she wants to take this out. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to take out this. Do I know how to do it? Yeah, roughly. So <laughs> that's part of the cool things about having a house is you get to find out uh, what you can basically uh, do. So what there is, is I'm gonna empty this out, but you see these screws right here? There's screws right here, and then there's screws on the other side. So there's basically just four screws holding this in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna empty this out, and then Kat's gonna film me actually taking this out. And we're gonna, we're gonna measure this, because they have pre-cut uh, pieces of drywall that are two foot by two foot, and we're gonna see if we can actually put it in here. So give me two seconds, I'm gonna empty this out, and then we'll get back to where I'm uh, taking this out. So. Basically, I just have it on a, a tripod. So, what we have is there's just two things, right? So they built the, there's wood coming through here, right? Should be wood, I don't know. I don't know, we're gonna find out. I don't know, let's, let's go ahead and just rip this bad boy open. Once you do this, there is literally no going back. No, I'm just kidding, you can go back, but. undo the screws now the reason why the reason why cat wants to take this off is because it doesn't give it a modern feel so I said whatever just let me know what to do Wow, that was like barely touching any kind of wood all right so now you may be thinking Zach why isn't that falling out well because what they did is they put some caulking around it and I need to break that caulking loose in order to uh, pull this bad boy out. Let's see, is there a way that I can take off this mirror so I don't break it? I don't think so. So what I need is a, either a, so I'm gonna use this. It's a flathead screwdriver just to break this seal. Why? Because I'm gonna put a whole new sheet of drywall here. Drywall's this stuff. I'm gonna put a whole new sheet of drywall in this and I already know that I'm gonna have to patch it. Like I know that I'm gonna put something on this seam. So I can literally demolish this whole edge and it'd be fine. So, basically what caulking is, is just a, a silicone type substance that keeps leaks out. So now you can see that I can actually like almost pull it out. See how it's starting to come out? Oh God. All right, so this is gone. Aw, look at, Ugh. all right. So this is gone. So now what right here, here's what I'm gonna do. That it's perfect that this has this piece of uh, stuff here. So what I'm gonna do 
is I am going to measure this and I'm either going to put a piece of board from here up or I'm going to take a piece of board from here over. I'm probably going to go want to go up and down because all the studs are up and down and that way gravity is not really fighting against it for the rest of its life. If I can get it straight up and down it'd be perfect because gravity is not going to try to mess with it and chances are it probably won't if it's hung sideways but I don't really want to take that chance. So the easiest way for me to do it would be to measure from the inside of here to the inside of here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call toe nail it in and I'm going to use screws because I don't have any kind of hammer or nails. I have to use screws. So basically what that is, is we're going to use this velvet sugar shower gel as an example. You have your piece of wood sitting on the other piece of wood. There's no way for you to drill straight in. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the screw and you're going to go in at an angle and pierce through here down into the other piece of wood. Normally when you toenail it, you go from one angle to this side and then the other angle to this side. That way that, I don't know what you would call that, force, I guess of them trying to go opposite ways kind of keeps it in place. And you can also toenail from the front into the back. Just as long as you get most of the wood, you have to be very careful when you toenail because you can split your wood at the very, very end because it's not used to opening up that way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure from here to here. I'm going to take that measurement and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Home Depot and I'm going to say, hey, this is the measurement that I need. They'll cut it and then I'm going to pick up one of those two by two uh, pieces of drywall. I don't know if this is two foot by two foot, so I'm going to measure it real quick. If it's not, then I can just use, let's say it's three feet, so I'll just use the two foot and then cut off some of it and then put it up here. So basically the reason why we're putting this stud in here is that way our drywall has something to attach to. Because we can't just put a sheet of drywall in here and say, oh, okay, it's fine. It needs to have something. So if you look at a house that's newly built, you'll without all this paint and texture on it, it's just drywall, you'll see a ton of screws going up and down where it's attached to the studs. The studs being these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure here. We're going to go to Home Depot. We're going to go get some of the stuff and then we'll be right back. Wait. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So what we're going to do is for this video, we're, we're going to install it. I know it's going to be late. I'm sorry. But we're going to install it and then next video, we're going to teach you how to mud and tape it and then like texture it and everything, which I don't even know how to do. Like I'm going to figure it out. This is, this is a learning process for me. Not going to lie. So now that we have this, let's go get some of the supplies. All right. So I went to go get the piece of wood cut at Home Depot. I told him two feet. I hope it's right. So we have a piece of wood here. My tape was well, right here. It's about two feet, a little bit less than two feet. So I kind of wanted to cheat it just a little bit. So let's see if this fits. Please fit. <laughs> like perfect. So now here comes a small, uh, slight problem, I guess you could say. You need to make sure that this is flush with this board inside here because if this sticks out that whole other piece of drywall is going to stick out so you need to make sure that this can fit in there almost perfectly also it helps to have a hammer me not so much don't have a hammer so let's Put this board as straight as we can. You can use a leveler, but my eye is actually really good. Let's see here. That looks pretty good, but I'm kind of worried about the... texture in here so what they did is when they did this whole room they just cut this out and then they textured everything so there's texture on here so it's probably about a sixteenth of an inch over but you know what I think I'll be able to blend it I'll be good so there's that there's that let's start toenailing this bad boy in so what I have 
So I have two inch T25 screws. Now T25 is a star drive. It's not your regular Phillips, it's not your regular flathead. So basically it looks like this. You can't see it, but that's what it looks like. <laughs> you can't see it, but that's what it looks like. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move a whole bunch of stuff. Man, this freaking reno is crazy. Look at all this stuff around here. And what you can do is before you even start doing it, you can actually take this out and start toenailing it in beforehand. But let's see here. Let's hope that this uh, works, shall we? All right, so you see how it's kind of angled? It's gonna go straight through here. So when the whole screw is inside the wood and I tighten it all the way down, this thing, judging by the angle, will probably look like this. So I'll get at least half of the screw, if not a little bit more, if I angle it a little bit more up, I'll get half of the screw inside this bottom plate right here. So now let me do the other side. It helps to go in straight and then actually curve the screw up. So right now it looks like this, so you can see how they're opposite sides. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing to this one and it will be golden. And pro in all honesty, I probably only need one screw. Not even joking. I probably just need one screw per side or one screw per top and bottom, but I'm not gonna do that. All right, so there we go. Screw, 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 screw. Now we are ready to go. I think I have a hammer. I don't know though. And the only reason why you want it straight up and down is so that way when you put your screws into the drywall, it'll actually uh, make it really easy for you because you just go straight up and down. Uh, so what you can do now, actually, is if it'll help you, you find out where you're going to put the stud, you can do this before or after you screw it, probably after, but I'm going to do it before, is you can take uh, a pencil and just mark right underneath where the center of the stud is and then right up at the top. Why? So that way when you put your drywall on, you won't be able to see this. So you can just follow this screw down, put three, four screws into it, and you're done. Let's, uh, let me see if I can find a hammer. Alright, so we got one. I'm just really scared about it. Oh well, let's find out. Oh, I'm not gonna really use this extension. That's nice. too hard and don't screw it in too far because then it'll split the wood. We just needed to hold a small like 10 ounce piece of drywall. So what I did is I put it actually on speed one instead of speed two. The different speeds is it goes faster per like trigger time, I guess. Like for one, if you do it like that, it'll probably spin like one or two times. If you do it on two, it might spin it three or four times. So basically it's how fast this whole thing spins. So now that this is in, this thing's like 
not going anywhere. What we're going to do is we are going to uh, peel off this old silicone. Look at that. That's what they put on the top of it. And then what we're going to do, you can do that with a uh, with your handy dandy flathead screwdriver. Go ahead and take that off. You're gonna want this surface as smooth as it possibly can be. Okay, so there's that. So now what we're gonna do, since I know that this top piece is two feet, we're gonna measure from here to here. Let's just go 14 and a half. So what it actually is, is 14 and five eighths. We're gonna go a 16th inch shorter than that, which is 14 and a half. because because what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want it to be able to fit in there and then when we mud and tape it it'll be perfect so I'm going to do 15, 14 and a half I believe yeah we're doing about 14 and a half so now since we know that this is two feet tall we're going to do 14 and a half. And then we're going to go down about halfway and we're going to do another 14 and a half. We're going to go down to the very bottom and then do another 14 and a half. And since we already have another sheet here, because Kat wants to do the other bedroom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as the straight edge and I'm going to line it up. And then once that's all lined up, I'm just going to make my line. So now I know exactly where to cut it so that this piece will fit in here just right. So what I have here is I have my knife. Just score it. Make sure to follow the line. I'm a little bit off, but I'm okay with that. So now score it again. So right now I feel I'm about halfway through this drywall. So now, once you have that, once you scored it, all you need to do is pick it up, Place it flat, hit it, pull out your blade again, cut from the back side. And voila! Here is your perfect piece that you cut out that you need for that. Alright, so now that we have our piece, we are actually going to change our bits because I have actual drywall screws. I was debating on using construction screws and I don't know if I can. Let me check real quick if I can. All right, so I found out that you can't use them. You can't use construction screws to hang drywall. So what I got is I got two inch, or actually one inch, one and five eighths inch drywall screws, a coarse thread. I like the coarse thread because it grabs more and you can't really rip it out. I can't find my bit though. All right, so I have my screws. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this up in here, think, and then when these screws go through it, that's about how much is gonna go through and stick into the piece of wood. So let's hope that I did this right. Oh my God, please work. Please, please work. Holy shnikes. Oh, I think it's going to stick out a little bit. We're going to find out. Alright, so what I need to do 
is almost pretty much nothing. There's just a little bit of stuff down here in this corner, which I can take out with a thing. Okay, so perfect. And then what we're going to do is we are going to we're going to take our pencil and on this drywall on the inside, you're going to write something. I don't know what it is. You can write whatever you want. I'm going to put Zach plus cat. I love you. And then I'm going to put today's date, which is Valentine's Day. I'm going to go 2 14 15. So now, whenever anybody tries to pull this out, nobody probably will because it's going to be a solid piece of the wall. But I know that whatever is in here is going to be Zach plus Cat. I love you. 2 14 15. I'll let you guys get a good look at that. I love doing renovations just for this purpose. I love putting stuff in there. Like, it's amazing. So the part that I chipped out is actually one of these. It was just some uh, texture that they scraped off. But right in there, Zach plus Cat, I love you. 2 14 15. I love doing stuff like that. I did it in my old house as well. So, now that that's there, let's go ahead and take this bad boy. See if this will fit. Might be a little bit too big on one side. Maybe. Let's see what it's catching on. It's catching on up here. Drywall is very, very soft. You can literally just bend it. Or you can literally scrape it away with just a screwdriver. I think that should fit. I think it's going to stick out a little bit. But I'm almost okay with that because what I can do when I mud and tape it, I can kind of texture it to where it'll kind of like bevel off. Normally you don't want that to happen. But since this is pre-existing, there's literally almost nothing I can do. anything special about it? You put the brace in? Yeah, and then before that, maybe over here on this side. Aww. That's cute. You like that? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start drilling and put it right into the drywall and go right through to the stud, which is that board in the middle. And plus, remember we put our lines, so I don't even need to guess where it is. That might work. <laughs> might work, we're gonna find out. There we go. So now let's put the other one in. Kind of don't like how that's kind of sitting at a weird angle. I think I know why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my screwdriver and I'm just going to go around 
all of these corners. To try to scrape off all of this stuff that's not going to make it sit flush. Try to keep your screwdriver as level as possible. As level as possible with the wood. If it's coming out over the piece of wood, If it's coming out over the piece of wood, like let's say your piece of wood's here and it's coming over like this, just saw it back. So there's that. Let's go ahead and see if this will fit in here a little bit better now. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. If I can have it just like that, that'd be perfect. So you know what it's doing? What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually prop it up because it's hitting on this bottom. So I'm actually going to try to prop it up with all these screwdrivers. and snug like that I think I'll be okay Take some more. If it's not sitting there flush, then Sorry, but that's the uh, that's how it that's because it's sticking out right here. The two by four is sticking out a little bit because there was some uh, some of that stuff, so it's pretty much sticking out like a sixteenth here. So I'm hoping that when I mud and tape it, it should look fine. All right, so there you go. That's how you hang it. Now all you need to do is just come through with some mud and some tape, texture it, and then you're ready to paint it. So next video will be that. All right? All right, so I found out what the problem was. I need to put some sort of reinforcement around the outside, right? I don't know why I didn't think of that before. Everybody that knows what they're doing is probably like, this guy is going to be horrible. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to take this off. Oh my god, Zach and Cat, it's cute. We're going to take this off, and then what I'm going to do is actually cut some of these. These are inch, or these are one by ones, I believe. They're inch 
uh, they're an inch by inch uh, piece of wood and I know that they're gonna split I just know it so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put them in here along this side I'm gonna put them right here I'm gonna put one here one over at the top one over here and one over here and basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me a place to where I can screw in this sheet of drywall to it so here's the deal I need this I need this I need this I need my screws and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to space them out and you can pre-drill these if you're if you're scared of it cracking you can actually do a pilot hole and you can pre-drill it but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do them all like this that way, when I put this up right here, I at least know that I can put my I can put my drywall screws right about here and right about here. So now I'm not interfering with any of these screws. So you just need to make sure that this is flush lined up. Got it. Cool. And hope that your drill can fit in there. Oh god, it might not fit. Word to the wise, you probably want to put these in before you put in this big block that stops everything. <laughs> throw that out there. So, it's okay if you're back a little bit from the back edge of this drywall because what you can do is you can float it out. You don't want to be crazy, crazy out, but you can actually float it out to where if it, this is too far back, you can just not screw it in all the way and it'd be perfectly flush. So I'm just gonna finish up these. I'm just gonna finish up these and it will be golden. All right. So all of these are put in place. They aren't gonna move. Actually, just not for this little piece of little piece of drywall. So now what we're gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and put this bad boy up again. Take this. Put it in there. Take this guy. Put him in there. Put him back in there. So now, where I put those marks, I can actually put some of these drywall screws. I'm gonna pull it in nice and tight. thing that you need to worry about when you have stuff like this and you're trying to float it out or basically no, I'm sorry when you, the only thing you need to worry about when using these one buys is that you have a very very slim line like I would want to use a 2x4 but since I didn't have one laying around and I didn't have the tools to cut it I had to use with what I had I used to have those those uh, dowels in my old house to block the windows so that being said, I 
I had to do with what works. Looks pretty flush to me. Now the only thing that I have is this corner down here. last minute calibrations and I think I'm good there we go so now what I'm gonna do tomorrow maybe tomorrow is I'm gonna clean up this edge I'm gonna tape it I'm gonna mud it put texture over it and we're done it is ready to be painted this is perfect holy cow it's just a small small like 16 of an inch bulge right here and that's because of that texture in the back of it but I'm 98 percent sure that when I mud and tape it I can just smooth that right out and you'll never even know that it was there unless you're looking for it all right but I'm sorry that this got on but I, I just had to uh, make an adjustment to what I was doing so I figured I'd let you guys know that way you're not putting stuff up and it's wrong. Normally you should have as much, um, what are they basically like flanges around the outside that we have something to screw into and not just have this middle piece. That's something I totally forgot about. So if you can, use another two foot piece and go to this edge and go to this other edge. That way you can actually screw into it. You won't have this problem at all. All right guys, but as of right now, it looks like our time is up. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave a comment down below whatever you are thinking. I will see you guys next time. Peace!